trades and a signing. Steve Dangle here on SDPN. Let's talk about a big deal. I, I think it's a big deal. It is literally a big deal in that it involves one of the biggest players in the National Hockey League. Anthony Mantha is now a Vegas Golden Knight. That's a deal that happened last night and I'm glad I waited to shoot this because this morning it was announced that Rasmus Sandin has signed a half decade extension with the Washington Capitals. Vladimir Tarasenko has also been traded to the Florida Panthers. That will be in the next video that I'm going to shoot after this. The full deal is as follows. The Vegas Golden Knights acquire Anthony Mantha, six foot five, over 230 pounds. For their trouble, the Washington Capitals acquire a second round pick from the Vegas Golden Knights in 2024 and a fourth round pick from the Vegas Golden Knights in 2026. And with Mantha being a pending UFA, the Washington Capitals ate half of his remaining salary in order to do that. It's funny, I've already talked to some people about this deal and they've sarcastically said, oh, blockbuster. When are you gonna learn, man? When are you gonna learn? I think we've started thinking about trade deadline deals all wrong. I think we've started to think about them from the perspective of the selling team. Which is fine if you cheer for the selling team, yeah! But I think sometimes we think about a blockbuster deal having a blockbuster return involving superstar players. But what if a deal doesn't necessarily have a blockbuster return, doesn't necessarily have a superstar player, but gives the reigning Stanley Cup champions a super solid chance at repeating? The Vegas Golden Knights acquired a winger last year to help them win the Stanley Cup. Who was it? Exactly, Ivan Barbashev, of course you remember, and then he signed this big extension to stay in Vegas and he's gonna be there forever. What'd they give up? Class? C can anyone- What did the Vegas Golden Knights trade for Ivan Barbashev? Was it- oh maybe it was a, a conditional pick because he signed an extension? No! It was a guy! Picks are not guys, they are future guys, they're not guys yet. Zach Dean is who the Vegas Golden Knights traded. Zach Dean, the 30th overall pick from 2021. Lo and behold, Barbashev was completely perfect for the Vegas Golden Knights lineup, was a huge part of them winning the 2023 Stanley Cup, the first Stanley Cup in franchise history, and now they go out and they get Anthony Mantha. I think we also need to adjust our expectations for Anthony Mantha a little bit because he's almost got a bit of an air of being a bust around him. Like, I mean, he's almost 30 years old now. He's certainly not a prospect anymore. And once upon a time, first round pick, skilled forward, six foot five. He had all the makings of being a potential super duper star. And now here he is well into his career. He's eclipsed 20 goals a few times. The Detroit Red Wings cut bait on him and traded him after the COVID shutdown, the, the, the COVID shortened season, the second one. But he has 34 points in 56 games so far this season, which is decent, maybe not mind blowing, but 20 of those 34 points are goals. And those 20 goals are already the third highest total of his career. And there's a really solid chance he hits a career high because his second is 24 and his best season is 25. And did I mention he's six foot five, 230 pounds? Actually, the websites I found listed him over 230 pounds, but 234, according to HockeyDB, sounded weirdly specific. Just because he's not the 50 plus goal scorer that he was in junior in the QMG, JHL does not mean Anthony Mantha cannot be an enormously helpful contributor for the Vegas Golden Knights. And if you're wondering, hey, does he use that six foot five, 230 plus pound frame? Yes, he beat the brakes off of Nick Cousins recently. That was cool. Oh, the brakes and wheels off of me did. Last year, famously, the Vegas Golden Knights won the Stanley Cup with an entire roster, every single player over six feet tall, except for the eventual Conn Smythe winner, Jonathan Marcheseau. Hilarious. Anthony Mantha is a Vegas Golden Knight. I think this is a magical deal for them. Right now, according to Daily Faceoff, he's listed on the Vegas Golden Knights third line with Nikola Waugh in the middle and Paul Cotter on the left wing, and I have tweeted that Paul Cotter plays like road rage. I mean, look at them in the regular season, they're obviously a good team. They've hit a bit of a slump recently, obviously, with the injury bug and everything, but they're a good regular season team that builds for the playoffs. I, I think this is a great move for them. Maybe one thing to flag though, in 11 career playoff games, Mantha has six points, all of them assists, no goals yet. The first goal he scores in these playoffs, if he scores in these playoffs, will be his first. From the Vegas Golden Knights end of it, dude, look at their draft pick situation according to capfriendly.com. They still have their first round pick 
in each of the next three seasons. They don't have a second round pick this season now, but they do in 2025 and 2026. They have all their thirds for the next three years. They have one fourth remaining. These guys have a ton of picks at their disposal. Yeah, their cap situation's a little bit of a mess, but the Vegas Golden Knights have really set themselves up for continued success. And yet, there is even more incentive to go all in this year, despite winning the Stanley Cup last year. This is the Vegas Golden Knights cap-friendly page, and it's gonna be a difficult off-season for them. Jonathan Marcheseau making five million bucks, that's it. He won the Conn Smythe is a pending UFA. Mantha is a pending UFA. Chandler Stevenson is up for a raise. He only makes 2.75 million. And then Michael Amadio has been really sneaky underrated for them. He needs one. Byron Fraze up front as well. And Alec Martinez on the back end. Oof. That's not to mention William Carrier, who's on injured reserve right now. The Vegas Golden Knights are going to have to make some decisions this offseason. I don't think this is it for Vegas. I don't think after the season they just stop contending. They're just a really well-run organization. But it sure feels like they're going to get a whole new look. And you might as well just empty the cupboard this season to do it. The Washington Capitals, on the other hand... They look like a rebuilding team and a team that's doing it well. Again, here's their draft pick situation according to Cap Friendly. They have all their first round picks for the next three years, and good, they should. They're not in a playoff spot right now. They don't have their own second rounder this year, but they do have Vegas's. Next year, they have three, their own, the Bruins, and the Avalanche, and then obviously two years from now, they have their own. Beyond the second round, they have at least one pick in every round for the next three years, except for the seventh round this year and next. That's really setting yourself up to recover quickly because, ah, do you really want to waste the end of Alex Ovechkin's career? Like, yeah, you got to rebuild. Yeah, you got to bring in the next generation, but you want to try to make the playoffs. And here's one way that they're trying to do it. The Washington Capitals have re-signed defenseman Rasmus Sandin to a five-year contract extension. Sandin's contract will carry an average annual value of $4.6 million. Per year. But this year, Rasmus Sandin's had a pretty frustrating job when you think about it. He was traded away from the Toronto Maple Leafs at last trade deadline, and the Capitals ended up giving the Leafs a first round pick in that deal. Strange for a rebuilding team, but this accelerated it. Also, it was a pretty late first round pick, and it wasn't even the Capitals' own. The Leafs ended up drafting Easton Cowan with it, who now has an OHL record point streak. But Rasmus Sandin is just 23 years old. He actually turns 24 tomorrow, and he's basically in charge with being next in line for running all things power play for the Washington Capitals, all things offense from the back end. For a team that has really struggled to score this season. And check this out, Sandin's been remarkably consistent. Rasmus Sandin's top offensive output came a few seasons ago with the Toronto Maple Leafs in 52 games, four goals, 16 assists for 20 points in those 52 games. In 52 games so far this season, three goals, 17 assists, 20 points. He's got a great vision of the ice. He has some defensive deficiencies, but the dude, for not a very big dude, can crush people with big hits. Even if you don't love Rasmus Sandin's game now, there is every reason to expect he is going to grow into an increased role with the Washington Capitals. So, what do you think of today's news with the Washington Capitals? Good? Bad? I, I just did the thumb the wrong way. And what do you think of the anthem... Anthony, Anthony Mantha. Anthony Mantha. What do you think of the Anthony Mantha acquisition for the Vegas Golden Knights? Because I think it is absolutely perfect. For now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe to SDPN. Gosh darn it. Tell all your friends that SDPN is the place to be all day for the trade deadline on Friday. And in the days leading up because we got even more stuff to shoot right now.